And in today's episode of Shorting and Overbought Stock, what's going on, guys? It's Ricky with Tech Fund Solutions. And BYND, just as we expected, went from highs of 100%. I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but I uploaded a video yesterday because BYND, which is the stock that you're seeing right now, reported earnings. It missed its earnings per share. It did beat its revenue. Its guidance was fair. Yet Beyond Meat, which is like the tofu kind of meat, um, gapped up. Uh, someone made a really funny joke that they must have said something about AI. Like AI is making our meat now because what can justify this crap company that has a consistent descending pattern over a long period of time? I mean, feel free to check this out. Look at look at this your, yourself. It went from highs of 190 during this whole like pandemic, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, shortly after the pandemic. There's a lot of hype with like Beyond Me and this artificial kind of me alternative. Great, but that hype died out, and it's as you know easy as day to see. From highs of nearly 200 to all the way to lows of five bucks per share. Like, come on, come on. And then it reports earnings. It gaps up at one point over 100%, and then it closes the day at 74%. And that's where we left off yesterday's video. And I talked about, hey, don't be surprised if this thing begins to pull on back for three specific reasons. First, obviously, its true direction is bearish. Second, it reported earnings, and it tends to be a short-lived catalyst, even if it was good. Third, it was not good. Everyone is saying it was a crap company, crap earnings, and it's, again, just Reddit traders hyping a stock up uh, and trying to squeeze out short sellers. Like, when are these Reddit traders going to figure out that as a whole, they're always going to lose? Like, and and this is the unfortunate part about that is I can almost reassure you the people that continue to pick these stocks to short squeeze are the ones that are actually making money that announce it because they know when to take profits. They know that this thing isn't going to last. And it's unfortunate for the beginners that get caught into the hype because now when it does begin to pull on back, for people like you and I, you're like, okay, well, this is obvious. This is obvious it's a crap company. But you'd be surprised from beginners, again, from highs of $15, if anyone purchased at that level, to where we're at right now, they would have lost 30% of their value in just a few hours. Imagine that. This is why we talk about risk management. This is why we talk about being aware and how to identify pump and dumps. Not to freak you out, not to, oh, I'm, I'm a, uh, what do they call me? A, a perma bear or something like that. I don't know what, what that even means. I might just be too old for that. But it's to spread awareness of risk management that like, no, not every hyped up stock, not, none of them are going to hold at those levels. It's only a matter of time for them to correct themselves. And this is a great example because from that 74% high to where we're at right now, it's already lost 15%. Um, and I'm excited to see if we do break below this $10 support, which we currently have right now, how low we can actually go. Can we go back to lows of $7? Because then that would be an additional 30% from that $10 to $30. So uh, really excited to follow up. Other than that, um, we did see ARM with some selling pressure. But if you look at this on the one hour time frame, ARM is testing a potential support on that one hour moving average. So please be aware of that. And then we also have Mara. Mara does report earnings today. Mara is gapping up because of what we're seeing with Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin just hit highs of, I think, almost $62,000 per, per Bitcoin. Um, so as long as Bitcoin continues to push up, then so will Mara. But I do want to make you aware, Mara reports earnings after the market closes today. So I think I'm going to make a follow-up video. You guys can let me know down in the comment section after Mara reports earnings. And then the last thing that I want to make you aware of is that tomorrow we do have the PCE report report coming out one hour before the market opened. And this is one of the Federal Reserve's favorite economic reports um, in, in their metric of measure to be able to determine, you know, do they still want to be aggressive? Do they want to be, um, you know, dovish with up and coming uh, FOMC meetings? So I'll keep you guys up today. Just wanted to keep today's video super short and sweet. NASDAQ market isn't, isn't doing anything crazy. If I'm not mistaken, NASDAQ market is in the red, uh, but it's down half of a percent. Uh, I still think that the NASDAQ market's going to be pulling on back on the larger time frames. I think we can see a nice little retracement down to the moving average. And the reason I believe that is because 
at least for the past economic reports, like the CPI data report and the PPI data report, they have all come out worse than what was expected. So there's my daughter. Uh, yeah, I do appreciate you guys' time. I hope that we're into thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to send me a direct message via Discord. Uh, and if you wanna watch me trade live as soon as tomorrow, that's going to be that second link in the description down below. Appreciate your time. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care, team.